Hey everyone, I wanted to uh, give you a quick book review here and uh, just want to say thank you to Gus Zimmerman for sending me this wonderful book. Uh, it's called The Khaki Road of Yesterday and it is written uh, basically with letters that his grandfather wrote to his daughter, Sashi, about his service in World War One. And it's a fantastic book in that it showcases the mentality of a World War I soldier and a World War I veteran, his experiences and how he perceived his experiences. The really interesting thing about this soldier, uh, whose name is John Kane, is that he was in the Graves Registration in World War I. So you get to see some behind-the-scenes things uh, that was going on, behind-the-scenes meaning behind the Western Front. And John Kane really does a great job of uh, remembering some of these instances so his daughter can understand what her father went through during that war. Now he wrote these in 1940. So you know what's going on in 1940. World War II is broken out in Europe uh, and uh, in 1939. And there's a lot of new aggression and new questions about what America may do on that front, you know, what, what are they going to get involved with? Are we going to stay out of it as much as possible? Are we going to get involved physically? We we're already involved economically to an extent. Now we're going to get involved physically. In 1940, obviously, no one knows that yet uh, in the civilian populace. And John Kane uh, not only reflects on his service in World War I, but he also reflects on what he feels uh, the memory of World War One is going to be going forward uh, into the next decade, uh, not knowing what is going to happen in the next decade. The great part about this book is it's very readable. Um, there are parts of it that are very relatable too. You know, the longing to be home and friendship and comradeship and kinship, and uh, that really strikes a chord with me that I really enjoy in this work. It's kind of like if you've ever read like a daily devotional or something like that where um, it's short stories and then you can move on to a different one. It's kind of like that. So you can actually read like one chapter of this a day and it's like three pages if that's all it, uh, you want to read. But I found that it's very readable and, uh, you know, it was one of those things where I started reading it and I was like, well, what's he going to say next about something else? And and what was his feelings about this? Maybe he'll say it in the next letter or the next thing to his daughter. Um, I think this is a very important book for not only you, the reader, but also you, if you have gone through an experience that you want to write about to your uh, children or to nephews and nieces or to um, some oral history program, because it lets you know that your story is important and there's other audiences out there who will appreciate it. Uh, his daughter gave permission for this book to be published. And I want to thank Gus Zimmerman again for sending this book to me. It's a fantastic work. Um, it is slightly over 170 pages. I think it's 100, 177 pages. You can find it on Amazon. Uh, again, the khaki road of yesterday. There's a passage, though, that I want to read out of it. And we're going back to uh, 1940 in America, thinking about what's going on overseas. And uh, this passage really struck a chord with me because it talks about uh, basically veterans and what they thought of what was happening. And it just really struck a chord with me. And it says, he wrote to his daughter, The Great Sore was opened in 1914. Pus flowed for four long years, and we thought the wound had been healed, but the seepage continued. And as I write this little story for you now in 1940, the flow has increased. Yes, in some respects worse than the times I relate to you. It will be to your generation and to those you bear to guard against this cancerous flow. Our boys who rest beneath the scattered soil of France, wearing the uniform of the country they loved, call to you, but they are not beckoning us to come and share the strained soil of distant lands where they are resting. They must wonder at times, 
at the similarity of the fine and noble phrases of 23 years ago that carried them across the sea and their resurrection again today. They see history repeating as surely as the sun will rise again from the darkness of the night to shine upon the hollow ground above them. They watch in silence the skeletons of 1914 to 1918, awakened from their long slumber, dusted off and dressed again in noble motives for the salvation of mankind. They heard all this long ago. They died that democracy might live throughout the world, that no more should warlords, crazed with power and the lust for blood, march against civilization. They, the dead, have fulfilled their mission. But we, the living, somewhere along the line, have failed miserable to carry on. They might well ask why the spirit of democracy has faded faster since the signing of the Versailles Treaty than in any like period of our times, and why leaders more wicked and bloodthirsty than the ones they knew were all allowed to become powerful enough to throw the world into gasping convulsions of horror again. That is an amazing passage amazing set of writing and this man was not only a great soldier he was a great writer and the things he witnessed had to be horrific and burying those men in france setting up those cemeteries in france and then thinking about their sacrifice uh 22 years later 21 years after he buried them it just had to be uh, a tremendous strain on him, perhaps writing these uh, things to his daughter was a way for him to self-medicate. It was a way for him to get it out, and it was a way for him to shed light on not only what he had done, but the, the struggle that he went through mentally uh, to come to grips with the fact that new things were happening uh, for bad reasons in the continent that he went to help save democracy. Uh, it's a fascinating book. It's really great. I love reading these kinds of books. Now with memoirs, I want to warn you, with memoirs, you can sugarcoat things. I'm not saying he did. What I'm saying is when you go into any memoir, I want you to not only have that memoir, but have some other form of background with that era because he's writing to his daughter. Someone else could be writing for a different reason. Someone else could be writing to uh, clear up their name that they think was done wrong, even though records show otherwise, uh, etc. So memoirs are dangerous in that way in that they can be seen as covering up things or just cleaning up things because the audience that that person is writing to uh, may not want to hear the darker sides of combat. Uh, that is not to say that, that John Cain did that. I'm not saying that in the least. What I'm saying is go into memoirs and be fascinated with them, but also understand the larger narrative going on with them. Now, again, Gus Zimmerman sent this to me. I want to thank his family for doing so. Uh, this is staying on my shelf with my World War I books because it's fascinating I uh, am fascinated by graves registration because I like to understand how we handle our dead, how they're remembered, how they're memorialized. It's a little niche for me that, that sometimes goes untouched. So John Cain's story uh, really resonated with me in that regard. Again, you can find it on Amazon very easily. If you go on there, you can look it up, uh, get your copy. I'm sure that the Zimmerman family would love for you to to purchase this book and again it is a not only a great read but an easy read you can read it probably in two or three evenings and you're done uh it's a very great monograph to have and i thank the family again for sending it to me thank you thank you for uh your lovely note that you sent with it i'm glad that your uh mother had chosen to to write this, uh, to allow you to write this book, allow you to uh, make this book public knowledge, because you do see the intimacy between a father and a daughter as far as his hopes for her and what he wants to tell her for the future. But I think that resonates with a larger audience, and I'm really happy that you shared that with me. 
and I want to share that with a lot of other people. So I once again say, please go online, look up The Khaki Road of History, uh, an autobiography written by John Cain from Enlistment to Discharge, and it was given to his young daughter for her to understand what her father had gone through in the Great War. So please pick up your copy. Thank you again to Gus Ehrman and his entire family for sending it to me. It really means a lot to me. I've been getting some books to do book reviews. I hope this helps. I hope that it opens up new doors for those of you who read any kind of autobiography or a memoir uh, to a new book, something different to, to read about. There's not a lot of blood and gore in this book, so I don't want you to think that he's going to go into massive detail about what the bodies look like when he buried them or anything like that. Remember, he's doing this for his daughter. And there are times when a father won't say things to a daughter about what they have been through. That's totally understandable. John Cain is that way, although he does get into detail about living conditions, about comrades, about uh, camps, uh, environments, stuff like that. And it really helps you to understand the larger narrative of what's going on behind the Western Front at this time. So please pick up your copy. Thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. There are more book reviews to come. I have uh, about three more lined up that I actually have to read and finish and then come on here and do another one. I'm going to uh, link all of this to you in the section underneath this video. So please take a look at it. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I really appreciate it. Take care.